Um, just before we begin the meeting proper, can I please take this opportunity to advise you that in the event of an emer the emergency alarm sounding, we should leave the building using the nearest available emergency exit as directed and assemble at the car park opposite Bedford College main entrance, which is to your left from Borough Hall until we receive further instructions. Anyone unable to leave the building should temporarily remain in the designated refuge whilst awaiting assistance to move to safety. And the nearest refuge is located through the door at the rear of committee room one, which is behind the public gallery, and is at the top of the stairs leading down to the side of the building. Thank you. I am aware it's very, very warm this evening, so um, obviously, Councillor Weir, you don't need to wear your jacket. I know I've got mine on at the moment, but if we wish to keep the quorum together. Um, there, I um, understand the water cooler is working outside if people need to get water at any point as well. Um, with that, just aware of how warm it is this evening. So, moving on to the agenda for this evening. Um, the first item on the agenda is questions from members of the council and members of the public. Now, I believe we have at least one. Councillor Weir. Oh, I, I have to give you, it's changed how we work slightly. I have to accept your pressing of button and then it'll light up. So you'll flash green, I'll press a button and then you'll be able to speak. <laughs> well, it seems to have worked, yes, thank you. Uh, my question is for John, um, Chief Officer of Planning um, and all those other things, John, that you'll look after, I forgot. Um, and it concerns uh, application reference number 21 stroke 01582 stroke MAF. And it concerns a, a 95 house parcel in Great Denham. Um, my question, John, is, uh, and I know that you're aware that, that there is a parcel of land that D David Wilson Holmes need to give up, which is tied to the application mentioned. This has dragged on now for quite some time, and the 560 primary school children at Great Denham have limited space for play and sport. You would also know that the additional six year five and six classrooms had to be built on the school field therefore restricting further access to sport and play areas. In addition, there are plans to build two specialist, special educational need classrooms, uh, which would further restrict the area available without the additional land tied to this application. The start of these uh, SEN classrooms is therefore linked to uh, resolving this application. We have been speaking about this now for several years, not with you, but your predecessors and so on. Um, and I know that David Wilson Holmes have dragged their feet uh, until recently. But the community, and especially the leadership team at the school, do need to know when decisions will be made about this application and the release of the land. Thank you. Press the wrong button, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Weir. Um, yes, we are aware of the application, and as you say, we've discussed this over several months, if not years. Um, firstly, there's no, there's no intrinsic need for the land for the school to be tied to the application, although both areas of land belong to the applicant, and they have chosen to make that link between them. Um, in terms of the application, we've been in discussion with the applicant about the amount of affordable housing that they can introduce onto the land. Our policy is for that to be 30%, and if applicants feel that it should be less than 30% for whatever reason, um, they're entitled to submit a viability report explaining why it's not viable to, to provide 30 and what number might be viable. Um, David Wilson Homes have provided that viability report within the last fortnight, and that is currently with the independent assessors at BNP Paribas who are checking their calculations. Um, they've suggested that 12% affordable housing would be av available, um, which is obviously quite some way below our requirements. Um, to, one of two things will happen from this point. Either BNP will agree with David Wilson's figures, in which case so will we, and we will accept the 12% and work forward on that basis, which would be a fairly quick process from now on, I think. Um, if BNP decide that 12% isn't right and some other figure, which is probably higher, is available and therefore that we should be pressing for, 
we will have to continue negotiations until those things are resolved. So I can't give you a definite date and I can't tell you which path we're going down until we get that back from the assessors. We should get it back from assessors this month um, and I'll be happy to give you an update after that as to where we are. Um, in the meantime, I think it's worth recording that we have asked David Wilson Holmes on a number of occasions if they would rent the land to us or to the school um, until the application is determined and so far they've refused to do that, which is very disappointing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any further questions from members of the council, members of the public, which are not related to applications we're hearing this evening? No, in that case, we shall move on to item two of the agenda, which has received any apologies for absence. I've received apologies from two members this evening, Councillor Sultan, who is being substituted this evening by Councillor Attic, and Councillor Massoud, who is being substituted this evening by Councillor Burley. All other members of the committee are here as usual this evening. Thank you very much. Item three is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of June, 2022. Those of you who were here and are present as a member of the committee this evening, are we happy I sign these as a record, true record of the meeting? Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Ryder and Weir. Moving on to item four on the agenda, and this is for members who are sitting on the committee this evening, is disclosure of local and or disclosable pecuniary interests. Obviously, members are reminded that where they have a local and or disclosable pecuniary interest in any business of the council to be considered at this meeting, they must disclose the existence and nature of that interest at the commencement of the consideration when the interest becomes apparent in accordance with the Council's Code of Conduct. Yes, I got yeah, interest in uh, agenda item number three. Thank you very much, Councillor Attack. It's going to take me a while to get this system sorted accordingly. Uh, we'll go into that a bit more when we get to item three as to who is able to actually take part in the discussion on the item this evening and who isn't. I have a number of councillors who are here in their role as interested parties or ward councillors. So I have councillor Noirs, councillor Akhtar and also councillor uh, Royden. Oh, my apologies councillor. I have two of you in the room tonight and I can't remember the name of either of you. I do blame the heat this evening. And Councillor Weir. I have a local interest in item three. I, I can, shall I go into that now or later? I, I just wanted to check whether I could still vote on the item because of the particular local interest. Um, well, by the sounds of it, we are going to have a bit of a debate about interests when that application um, comes up. So perhaps we can deal with that as each application arises. Thank you very much. So moving on to item five on the agenda. This is the report of the Chief Officer Planning, Infrastructure and Economic Growth. And these are the reports on first of all planning appeals from April to June 2022 and then planning enforcement April to June 2022. If I could please ask Ian to uh, present the report. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. We, repeat, we received 20 appeal decisions in the last quarter, 14 dismissed and six allowed. This equates to a dismissal rate of 70% for the quarter. We received the decision on the Drips Gypsy and Traveller site at Tithe Road, Kempston, that has been outstanding for almost two years and has been allowed. The inspector considered that the appellant's personal circumstances demonstrated a clear need for the single family pitch and allowed the appeal subject to a condition making the permission personal to them and their dependents. An appeal against an extensive enforcement notice at New Road Farm Copal has also largely been dismissed. This related to the unauthorised mixed use of the land incorporating storage, HGV parking, car and motorbike repairs and sales. The inspector increased the time for compliance to six months but dismissed the appeal on all other grounds. We're now waiting on the outcome of a further planning application which has been made for the site before deciding further action. Secondly, the enforcement report. The total caseload case has been further reduced by 42 cases and currently stands at 254 cases. This is a significant reduction from the 344 cases we reported for the end of December. 
We've served a temporary stop notice and enforcement notice on a new traveller's site in Kiso. The site was set up and completed over the Jubilee Bank Holiday weekend. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of Ian on the report? No? Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Ian. Thank you. We covered both parts. Mr. Jeff. We covered both parts. My brain is still a bit addled, I'm afraid, so thank you very much. Moving. Yes. Uh, the committee happy to note both of the reports we've had? Yeah, thank you very much. So noted. Moving on to item six on the agenda. <coughs> And these are applications um, to be heard this evening. We've only got three items on the agenda, and I'm going to, I'm going to hear them chronologically, um, just as a bit easier for the shuffling around this evening. So the first item we will hear is uh, an item which was deferred from the last meeting, and this is application number 214-02525-FUL, which you'll find on pages three to 12 of your report pack. And this is for 8A, 9 and 10, Rand Randall's Close, Brom and Bedford, Bevshire, MK 438LN. Um, we've obviously had the main debate last month, so if there's just any update from officers, please. Good, and hopefully that's working. Um, yes, there's an update from the committee site visit held on the 4th of July. Uh, members were concerned about overlooking through the wire fence and new planting that had been installed along the boundary by the neighbour at uh, number 37 Village Road and suggested a timber privacy fence should be installed. Um, officers have put together a, a recommended condition should members be minded to grant permission, uh, requiring full details of a 1.8 metre high timber fence along the boundary uh, to the east of number 10 Randall's Close and between that property and 37 Village Road. And those details will have to be submitted and approved. That's the end of the update. Right, okay, yep, yeah, sorry, wasn't it? Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll do that. Right, I've got my own light flashing there, that is it. Sorry, I should have pointed out at the beginning of this item that actually Councillors Burley, Attic and Oliver are able to take part in this vote this evening as they were not present at the meeting last month. So it's only the members who were here last month and are present as members of the committee this evening. So, having had the update from Paul, are there any questions of the officers, please? Councillor Weir. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I know we discussed the, um, the screening from Village Road, which I thought was appropriate. I think some of the things that we discussed as a group as we were walking around was the, the top of the windows on 8A, um, which faced the garden of number 8, could there be a condition there to obscure just the top section of those windows? Is that doable? Is that something feasible? Um, well, in theory, you could, yes. I think two of the windows proposed to be inserted in the existing side wall of the house could, in theory, be put in without requiring planning consent. I think the other window was a high-level window, um, which uh, we shouldn't be able to look out of anyway, but uh, it will be up to members if they decide they want to apply such a condition. Thank you, myself. Paul, if I could just remind you again to speak into the microphone, because I think Councillor Ryder was slightly struggling to hear you. Sorry about that. Very Councillor Foster. Yes, I know this was also discussed at the uh, site visit, and that's the possibility of moving the cycle shed, which directly abuts uh, one of the neighbour's properties. Uh, it rises slightly above the existing fence, but uh, I think a lot of us felt that it would be much better if it was moved over to the other side of the garden. Again, officers would comment that it is a fairly small shed, um, but as we noted on site, there is obviously ample room to move it if members were so minded that they, they request that, and that could be an additional condition requiring its removal, but officers do comment that it is quite a small structure. Thank you very much. Are there any further questions from members? Councillor Ryder. Nope. Okay, that's fine. Um, I 
don't think there's any further questions at the moment. If I can please invite comments from members. Thank you. <clears> Hi, <throat> Lynn. The two um, subjects that have been mentioned already, um, I did do a site visit and we did have, we spent an hour there, so we really did um, examine from all angles, all properties. <laughs> Evacuate. <laughs> Sorry, counts the ride, I carry it. Sorry, it wasn't one. Okay, so um, having listened to what the comments, uh, the questions that were asked, and having visited, and we'd be there an hour, we went completely to all the properties that people had um, expressed the concern. And I personally don't feel we have any grounds to refuse this application. Um, I'm quite happy if those two things can be um, addressed. I don't have a problem with it. And I would go for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Foster. I would like to propose the close border uh, fence, as mentioned by Councillor Weir, and also moving the cycle shed, if we could possibly request that, please. Okay, I just think we need to be clear on how we're going to condition the cycle shed and its positioning within the garden. Are we able to put a condition in saying it has to be so many metres away from the boundary fence to number eight? Jan? I'm not getting a light. Oh, sorry, I'm speaking. I didn't get a light. Um, you need to be precise with a condition. You can't simply say we'd like the cycle shed moved, so you'd have to identify where you'd like it moved. Um, and you'd have to obviously explain the reason why. Um, is it overwhelming, overbearing, and those sort of scenarios? Um, I think Paul has explained he feels it's a small-scale structure, which ordinarily would be permitted development. Anybody can put a shed in their back garden. Um, as long as it meets certain requirements in this regard, it's a small-scale structure. So if you're looking to relocate it, then you'd have to have a look at one of the plans, which are flashing on the screen, um, to identify a bit more precise where you would want it relocated um, and the reason why. It isn't beyond the realm of possibility to include such a condition, of course, but it has to be justified. Councillor Tower. Can we, in that case, propose it moves on the opposite side of the house up against the fence? OK. Um... I'd, I'd like just to see a plan that's coming round. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't at the site visit, so Paul might be best to respond. Um, given he was there, but does that then have an implication on another property? So I think we need to be clear. Um, Andrew, if we could move through the plans to get the site location plan um, so that it could be a bit more explicit, because we've got, if we've got to craft the condition post-committee, it would be um, essential that we take a look. Yeah, I think the, uh, the, there was a location around the rear of the garage um, which it could be sited uh, quite close up to that structure and away from any other boundaries. Um, so, oh, you're going back to the... Yeah, number eight is the one on the left-hand side. Currently, the, shed, uh, the cycle shed is proposed on the southern boundary of that property. Um, it could be located around the back of the garage, which is the single-storey structure that uh, projects out the front of that property to the left, which is number number eight, I believe, or 8A. Um, so it would be well away from the boundary of other properties. And it is quite a small structure, so I wouldn't see a particular problem in that happening. If you want to make that, that's... Yep. That's Thank you. So just to be clear, we are proposing two additional conditions. They are the close boarded fence for the boundary to the gardens on um, village Road, I think number 37, and possibly 39, and moving the siting of the cycle shed from against the fence at number 8A to the other side of the garden at number 8. So the... Um, Councillor Weir. Thank you, Chair. Um, we also talked about obscuring the windows. Um, I don't know how we condition that or... Do we need a plan to point them out? Yes, please. If we can get the plan up. Uh, 
There are two high-level narrow windows that would be difficult to look out of, um, but there are two um, fairly large windows that sit very close to the boundary fence, and from the top of those, anybody of, of average height would be able to see over. If we could just get the top of those obscured, that would help. Sorry, there are two windows going in the current property in the side where there are currently no windows. Ground level? At, at ground level, yes. It would be permitted development. So... So you'd, I, I, I suggest that would be an unreasonable imposition because they could do that anyway without needing to come before the local authority. You would obscure windows at a first floor level um, because obviously of that overlooking. I think the issue is that because the property sits higher than the, a neighbouring property, it, it's an elevated, it's a higher window than would normally be at ground level. Would they be looking into? Uh, they'd be looking onto a patio area in the next, next door's garden. Paul, having visited the site, do you feel that's reasonable? Uh, well, the, as I said before, and as Jan's just repeated, the two windows that would serve, I believe, a, uh, just having a look at the plan, a sitting room, um, they could be inserted without requiring planning consent anyway, so we'd probably find it difficult to justify applying a condition because it has to be enforceable. Um, the other one is a high-level window serving the dining room, and uh, I wouldn't expect that to overlook anyway, being a high-level window. So it's, uh, it's really justifying why we would impose those conditions in those circumstances. Uh, I don't know who was, whether Councillor Weir or Councillor Foster was about to speak then. If you look like your lips are about to move, Councillor Weir. I, I, they were. Um, and again, it, it's, um, we're assuming that the applicant would object to, uh, could we not just ask out of uh, neighbourliness to someone who's concerned about being overlooked? And I know it's not a material consideration, etc. But Simply because an applicant would agree to it, that would fail every test of applying conditions. So whilst they might agree, they might also want to pay people lots of money just to build what they want to build there, but it wouldn't be reasonable. So we, in planning terms, it would have to be a reasonable condition. I haven't been to the site. If there is a different inland levels and there would be a severe overlooking impact, I would suggest that probably is a reasonable condition to impose regardless. Um, that's why I asked Paul if there would be an overlooking implication. They would be permitted. They could put those windows in without acting on the planning permission. So I would just bear in mind, whilst we might feel it's reasonable and we could impose the condition if there is a change in levels, they could put that window in before they start any other development and it would be permitted development because they wouldn't be permitted. The condition will only bite when they undertake to implement the planning permission. So if they did the window first... <laughs> um, Ian's team, who deal with enforcement, would struggle to say that that wouldn't be permissible. So just bear that in mind. Thank you. I think we just need to bear in mind that any condition we make, we want to be able to be sure we can enforce it if it comes, you know, if it was to come back and be com and complained about at some point. I think certainly with the cycle shed and the close boarded fence, there are conditions which can be applied and will be enforceable. I do have a concern that they can insert the windows and whatever condition we have will actually make no material difference. I, I, I do get all that, I'm honestly, because I've been through it for the last three years, so I, I understand all that. However, because of that difference in height, I do think it is overlooking, and it, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask them to obscure the top section of those windows at, at, at sort of fence level. I think if given the land levels we could impose the condition what I'm just pointing out is if they don't implement the permission they could put the window in anyway so just to bear that in mind however if they do implement the permission um, obviously that condition will bite thank you I think as a committee we are minded to have that condition applied um, Councillor Foster 
Yes, just in relation to the close boarded fence chair. You mentioned number 37 and 39. When we visited, we felt that it was 37 that was um, adversely affected because of the double glass door that would be, um, would be overlooking their property. I don't think we made any comment about 39, which doesn't, I don't think that would be affected at all since it's, um, if you look on the plan, it's, it's not even uh, adjoining the um, application site. I, I think, only mentioned I think, it as in complete, the complete, it, it, it would be the complete boundary treatment of that side then rather than imposing on part of in the that boundary case, treatment. In that case, 37 and 35, not 37 and 39. Yes, that, that, that's, that's my knowledge, that's my memory failing me slightly. So it's 37 and 35. Um, yeah, obviously at the site visit, it was in the garden of 37 we stood and obviously there was a fairly open boundary treatment along there. When you actually go to number 35, that actually has a rear boundary onto the public side of the uh, Randalls Close, so that that, that property is not affected in regard to the back garden area. That's right. Well, in that case, it would be the boundary treatment of number 37, Village Road. So, um, we are looking at an additional condition on obscuring the glazing on the win on those the large windows on the side of the property moving the bike shed to the other side of the property and a close boarded fence for the garden of against the boundary of number 37 um, do i have a member happy to propose that councillor Towler, thank you is that seconded by councillor Ryder? if i can have a show of hands of all those members who are in favor please that's oh, Councillor Royden, were you not at the last meeting? Yes. Yes, thank you. I thought Councillor Royden was there. You don't have to you don't have to attend the site site visit. So I have one, two, three, four members in favour. Uh, any members against? And Councillor Foster as abstaining. The permission is granted with four votes and one abstention. Thank you very much. Um, those who came to hear item one, if you would like to leave, we'll just uh, give you time to gather your stuff up. It's a very hot evening tonight. Right, moving on to the next item on the agenda. This is item two. This is application number 214-02849, forward slash FUL, found on pages 13 to 25 of the report pack. And this is 44 Days Lane, Bidnam, Bedford, Bedfordshire, MK 404AE. If I could please have a summary from officers. Thank you, Chair. This application is for the demolition of an existing dwelling and its replacement with a much larger dwelling and garage. The application is before committee for determination as Biddenham Parish Council has objected to the proposal because of the negative impacts on the street scene of the double garage proposed, which is positioned forward of the main dwelling. Five comments were also received from four households, four of which were objections and one was a letter of support. As mentioned, the proposed dwelling is to be a larger dwelling in comparison to the existing However, given the plot size, this is not considered to be an issue. The dwelling is also considered to be appropriately set off the shared boundaries. There is no uniform character on Days Lane with a range of sizes and designs. In this instance, the proposed dwelling is to be of a Georgian design, but this is not considered to be unacceptable given the range of designs in the street scene and the fact that the Georgian design is prominent within Biddenham. One issue which has been raised by the neighbours in the parish, as mentioned, is the design and location of the garage, which is sited forward of the main dwelling. Amendments were received during the application process to reduce the height of the garage, and this has definitely improved the design and has resulted in the garage being less prominent. When the slides will revolve, members will also note on some of the aerial photographs that this is not an anomaly in the street that other garages do project forward of their buildings. Um, it is not considered that the garage is substantial enough or will create a precedent to justify refusing the application. Taking into account the whole scheme, whilst it is substantial, 
what is proposed is not considered to have a harmful impact on the street scene or character of the area. The proposal is also not considered to result in overbearingness, loss of privacy or loss of light impacts to neighbouring properties. Moreover, appropriate conditions have been imposed restricting windows in order to protect the privacy of neighbours. It is considered that the proposal will accord with the relevant policies of the local plan and it is recommended for approval. There is no update. Thank you very much and thank you, Andrew, for managing to get the slides up on the screen for us. Are there any questions from members of officers? Are there any comments from members, please? No, thank you very much. Just to be clear, all members present in the planning committee tonight are able to vote on this particular application. Um, the proposal from our officers is to grant permission with the conditions laid down in the report pack. Do I have a member who's prepared to propose that? Councillor Foster. Proposed by Councillor Foster, seconded by Councillor Towler. If I could have a show of hands of all those members in favour of the application. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's all eight members in favour. Just to be clear, there's no objections and there's no abstentions. The application is passed subject to conditions laid down in the report pack. We now move on to the last item on our agenda this evening. This is item number 214-03110-MAF, found on pages 26 to 41. And this is land at Fox End, Green Road, Kempston, Bedfordshire. Now, <clears throat> we have some members who are unable to take part in this application due to um, potential local interest. I have some members who are here to speak this evening in their role as um, councillors on the Borough Council. I have Councillor Royden. Councillor Akhtar and Councillor Nawaz to speak. Councillor Atik is going to leave the room at this point, and this is just for clarity, if we can clarify this, David, as to why Councillor Atik can't take part, please. Well, Chair, the, uh, the Council has uh, planning guidelines, planning guidance, which is set out in the Constitution, and it effectively states that anybody that has a close connection to an application uh, is disqualified from taking part in that application. As, as I understand it, Councillor Attig's husband is a member of the committee uh, of, the, uh, of the applicant, and that therefore is a close connection which disqualifies her from taking part. Thank you very much. And just to be clear, so Councillor Attig has no influence over the meeting, so why Councillor Attig has left the room for this particular item we are hearing. Please have an uh, executive summary from officers. Oh, sorry, Councillor Weir, my apologies. Thank you. I, I just wanted to check on the veracity of my ability to take part in this. Um, first of all, from a local point of view, it's in my ward, and it was first brought to the Parish Council, whose meetings I always attend, Kempston Rural Parish. Um, from the comments made at the first parish council meeting, I then facilitated a meeting with the burial committee and, re and residents of Kempston Rural in my other, one of my other parishes, Great Denham. And I facilitated, booked the room, etc., and so on, and helped set up a, a presentation. So I don't know where that leaves me. Well, I think it, it depends really whether or not you believe you've predetermined the matter. If you've got to that stage, i.e. you've nailed your colours to the mast, then you ought to withdraw. But if you come here with an open mind and prepare to listen to all the, um, the evidence and material that's put before the, the committee, um, that would be fine. Normally one would declare a local interest where a matter's been before a local parish council, as I say, provided that you haven't set out your position um, to the point where you are no longer capable of making a, an open and fair decision on the matter. I have not made any decisions or discussed it with the Parish Council, my views, so my views will be judged on tonight's application as it's presented. You can participate. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Weir, for getting that clarified. Uh, Paul, if I can ask you for the executive summary. Certainly, yes, sir. The site is located to the west of Box End Road and the existing Kempston. Really sorry, move my phone a bit closer. Okay, closer. Working, is it? Okay, uh, the site is located to the west of Box End Road and the existing Kempston Cemetery and comprises of approximately 3.7 hectares of agricultural land. 
to the south of the site are residential dwellings fronting Green End with agricultural land to the north and west. The site is located well away from any built up area designation. The ground level rises slightly from east to west. Public rights of way cross the site from south to north, connecting the existing cemetery with the B560. The site is access, accessed via a proposed access uh, from uh, Box End Road to the east. Planning Commission has sought to change the use of agricultural land to a cemetery for the Muslim faith with a capacity of 4,856 graves. The application also includes permission for the erection of an administration building, formation of a vehicle access, an access road, car parking, drainage works and landscaping. The administration building will be two storeys with an internal mezzanine floor. It will measure 20 metres wide by 10.6 metres deep with the roof being 2.96 metres to eaves height and 7.55 metres to the ridge. This will contain a ground floor level and, uh, with an office, family room, cold room, a lobby with toilet and storage area for equipment with offices on the mezzanine floor. The proposal is contrary to policy 7S, which relates to new developments in the open countryside, but the applicant has demonstrated that there is a significant level of community support for the proposed development and that there is significant demand and community need to justify a departure from policy 7S in this instance. It is therefore recommended approval, subject conditions, and a section 106 agreement to deliver funding for the forest of Marston Vale in line with the requirements of policies 35S and 36S of the local plan. Now, there, is, there is an update. Um, <clears throat> this relates to largely the Forest of Marston Vale section. In section 2.6 of the report, reference has been made securing an off-site tree planting contribution towards the Forest of Marston Vale Trust of uh, £32,099 via a section 106 agreement. Ongoing discussions are being had between the applicant and the Forest of Marston Vale Trust, and this uh, sum may be reduced if they're able to use council assets to carry out the planting required to offset the under-provision on site. The sum may be reduced to in the order of £20,766. The applicant has also requested an amount is phased over five years. It is understood this may be acceptable to the Forest and Marston Vale Trust and would require the final details to be concluded during negotiations to complete the Section 106 agreements should members be minded to grant permission. If members are minded to grant permission, they should confirm their agreement for this to be concluded by officers during discussions over the final details of the Section 106. Now, there's one other small update as well. Uh, at the member's briefing, questions are raised about whether the parish or town council had commented on the application. At paragraph 2.9, it does make reference to the Kempston Town Council. Members are requested to note that it is in fact Kempston Rural Parish Council that made the comments and not Kempston Town Council. That's the end of the update. Thank you very much. I shall now move on to councillors who wish to speak. Um, as councillors, you have no time limit on the amount of time you have to speak. I will ask you to be reasonably brief as it's very warm this evening. Uh, Councillor Actar and the way as you are speaking as borough councillors of adjoining wards and Councillor Royden is here as the portfolio holder for environment. Uh, the environment which uh, deals with obviously burial grounds and that side and obviously as a councillor as well. Here's a locally concerned councillor. Thank you, sir. I will just take, I will take you out the best which is Councillor Actar first. Sorry, Chair. Can I just, uh, I, I should have mentioned this earlier, but um, both Councillors Noaz and Actar will be declaring interest in relation to this matter. They're in the same position as Councillor Attic, but of course they're not sitting as members of the Planning Committee this evening. So effectively, they're in the same position as, if you can remember back to the last meeting, uh, same position as Councillor Rigby was in relation to Randall's Close. Sorry. No, thank you for the clarification, David. It's appreciated. So, Councillor Actor. Thank you. Uh, Wendy, can you hear me? Councillor Ryder. Okay, thank you. Um, um, I would like to declare an interest, just like, um, for example, a local interest, because I'm representing my residents here. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm in support of this application because not only does it affect my constituents, but other people from low income wards who have put into this project. The community have stated that the religious needs of the community are not currently being met by the um, council provisions at the moment. 
for example, um, they do not offer seven days a week burial services. Muslims need to bury their deceased as soon as possible. Councillor Masood recently just mentioned only this week a child had sadly passed away. All paperwork was complete. The burial couldn't take place on Wednesday, uh, will take place on Wednesday because the cemetery, cemetery staff are too busy. Another issue is that plots um, are offered on a leasehold of 70 years. Muslims do not want their loved ones disturbed and need a freehold provision. There are also other issues documented in the needs assessment, needs statement to the planning team. Furthermore, there have been over 400 letters written and signed in support of this project. The fact that the project is self-funded indicates that it is a need in the Muslim community. Our MP Mohammed Yassin is also fully in support of this application. Um, myself and Councillor Masood would like to request members to go with the officer's recommendations to approve this application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Akhtar. Thank you for being brief. Councillor Nawaz, thank you. Chairman, members of committee, good evening. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to say a few words regarding this application. Before I start, I'd like to declare self-interest, as we already mentioned. As you've heard from many uh, local community members, and Council Actor just mentioned a few highlights uh, of the issues regarding our communities facing this. I don't want to take too much of your time because, as you already mentioned, it's very hot, so we like to keep it cool. I, I fully support this application 100%. And also, i like to... Uh, mention a few of my colleagues, councillors, who I'm speaking on behalf of, is Councillor Sultan, Councillor Etke, and Masood, who are also fully support of this application. So I, I believe that you have received many uh, letters and emails regarding the support in this application. So therefore, thank you for giving me this opportunity, and I hope that we'll be supporting this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nawaz. And finally, Councillor Royden. Well, thank you, Chair, and thank you to members of the Planning Committee for allowing me the opportunity to speak, and, and thank you to the applicants for coming along this evening as well. Um, I, I've got a considered interest in uh, burial. I've been um, privileged to be able to uh, inter people for over 30 years, and I've been <clears throat> the Chair of St Albans Woodland Burial Ground for over 15 years, so I've got a considerable experience in this area. And I'm pleased to offer support for this application. And I believe that the plans which have been <clears throat> brought forward have been extremely well developed. Um, at the place of, of a burial is very important to our faith communities. The Christian community can access consecrated burial space in Bedford. And that kind of facility must be offered to our other faith, commu faith communities. I believe that the planning department have dealt with any concerns and dealt with the application in a very considered manner. And that gives me reassurance that this will be managed and offer a very important provision for our Muslim community. I particularly like to say how uh, important this application is in demonstrating the wholehearted commitment to this borough of our Muslim community. And this will be a much welcomed facility for a significant faith group. And I congratulate the applicants for what I believe is an extremely professional and well put together application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Royden. I don't believe there's any comments back from officers on what they have. Uh, no comments to make, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from members of the Committee of Officers on this application? Are there any comments from members, please? Councillor Oliver. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, my concerns about this application would have been perhaps about access on to, onto Box End Road, but highways haven't raised concern, and reading the report, it, it's, it's certainly acceptable. Um, and my other concern would have been the right of way, and that has been addressed in the report and by way of, of uh, specifying what can and can't be done. So I'm, I'm happy that my concerns have been addressed. I'm also pleased to see that, that it's a sensible solution is being reached with regard to trees because we all know <laughs> that, that additional trees are very, very necessary under, under today's conditions. But it, it, 
isn't sensible to have them on a site instead of burial plots. So if an arrangement can be come to with um, the Forest of Marston Vale, I think that's extremely sensible. I was on, uh, many years ago, I was on Bedford Bereavement Care, which is uh, the, the, the body that oversaw the North, North Road Cemetery. I was also on the committee, I think it was General Purposes, that um, looked at the, the trial period of, of Saturday burials. And through both those committees, I learned firsthand about how much such a facility is needed by the community. And like Councillor Royden, I congratulate the, the people who have put in this application because it's been a long road. I mean, they've, 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 they've would appear to have, have taken advice uh, of, of our planning officers and come back with alternate suggestions uh, to find something that is acceptable uh, to, to hopefully the majority of people. Uh, also, the fact that there is considerable support amongst the community for this is, is another overriding factor. So I will be happy to support this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Ryder. Yes, I'd also agree, a well-presented application, a much-needed facility in Bedford, and I wholeheartedly support this application. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Yes, I support this application as well. It's always horrified me that uh, Christians only have a 70-year lease on their burial plot. I think it's quite right that burial plots should be freehold. I support this application, and I would like to propose that we accept it. Thank you. The application is proposed by Councillor Foster, seconded by Councillor Weir. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I, did, I didn't just ask to make sure if there's anyone else had any comments to, before uh, we proposed it, but I don't believe so. The proposal before us is to accept the officer's recommendations that the conditions laid down. If I could have a show of hands for all members, please. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's all seven members in favour. Just for clarity, any objections? None. And any abstentions? None. The application is passed subject to conditions laid down. That item concludes our planning committee meeting for this evening. Thank you very much to everyone for coming out on a warm evening. Thank you to the councillors who came along this evening to speak in support of the applications. It is always appreciated. And at 17 minutes past seven, the meeting is closed. <laughs>